be our first two. They might be the two biggest storylines of opening rounds as Michael Boss takes the Blues back to Brisbane to face the Lions after that epic preliminary final. And Damien Hardwick will lead the Suns for the first time in a promoter's dream. Actually, it's a promoter's choice against Richmond. First up, they're our first coaches on 360 on Coaches Nights. Michael Boss, great to have you at the desk. Good to be here, Jared. Robbo. Suns headquarters, Damien Hardwick's with us. Damien, welcome back to 360. Jared, Robbo, how are we? We're well. So we'll dig into your circumstances in a moment. Just the one issue facing the game today is the is the Webster hits and what the tribunal will do, what the standard that is set, the community is deeply engaged. Michael, how how engaged are the participants of the sport in how this unfolds? No, I think we're all waiting um, to sort of see what uh, stance is taken. Um, it's a rather unusual incident. We don't see it too often. Um, and I think all parties have you know, stepped back and accepted that um, it's probably not what we want in the game. Um, so I think we all acknowledge that, that that's where the game's going. Um, but, you know, as far as the players go, they're fully aware of their responsibilities. And, you know, clearly there's got to be care taken when we choose to take that action. Um, but it's pretty clear for the players. So we don't feel like we've had to cover it too much or give it too much coverage because um, it's been well and truly spoken about. Damien, the expectation that <coughs> penalties will rise on anything of this nature that causes a concussion, are, are, are you sort of, um, are you curious as to how high that goes tomorrow? Oh, I think we all are curious. I think we were uh, all a bit taken aback by the incident itself. And, you know, you look at Jimmy Webster as a player and players don't go in the game making those sort of actions, you know, voluntarily. So it was one of those ones that was taken a little bit by surprise. So, look, it'll be a significant penalty and we understand where we're at as a game at the moment with the concussion protocols and the concussion, you know, history going through the game at present. So it'll be a uh, rather lofty suspension, I would say. And Damien, when the... When the tirade rises inside a coach, how aware are you to stay away from opposition players in such a moment? <clears throat> yeah, look, it's funny. Look, Clarko obviously being a good mate of mine and look, at you know, I'm... I'm someone that's got myself in trouble with this previously as well. So you, you've got to realise, and look, Clarko will be apologetic. You know, the language he used is, is obviously not on and he accepts that, but... When they're your players, they're your boys, they're like your children, you get very protective of those guys. And that's not to say that you should overstep the line, but the reality is every now and then we're going to do it. We're human, we're emotional. We see someone we probably love at the, on the ground, you know, writhing in, in pain. So, um, you know, it's one of those moments I wish he could, you know, he wish he could take back. But the fact of the matter is what's done is done. Have you also got sympathy for Clarkson? Um, maybe some understanding, appreciation, uh, but yeah, certainly I think Dem summarised it really well. They're our boys. Um, you know, we understand their story. In, in Jai's case, it was um, you know having some previous concussions, and um, obviously this is not ideal for him. So you know, immediately he's thinking about his own welfare of the player and and how he protects his players. And I think that's a sort of almost human reaction that uh, that you're going to protect in those circumstances. I think we can also under Understand that that's probably just a, a little bit too far um, and we probably do need to keep our emotions in check there but um, understand it but certainly don't have any sympathy towards it. Gemma, we're running some numbers in the paper tomorrow. It's only from the pre-season game but the last six years at Richmond, you were, the, the Tigers were the number one long-kicking team in the competition and the numbers from the weekend were showing the same that the Gold Coast were the number one long-kicking team in the weekend. It wasn't a great result for you. Adam Kingsley spoke about this last year when, you, when he got to the Giants, bringing his brand of football and getting the players to adopt it around about round 10, 11, I think it really came into sync. Are you expecting the same with, with, with your mob up at, up at the Suns or are you expecting them to hit the road from round one and say, no, nah, we've got this down pat? No, we'd be hoping it's a little bit quicker than round 10, but um, the fact of the matter is not, we're not where we want to be now, and we always knew it was going to take a little bit of time. And look, the Giants is a great, um, a great case for us to follow. They play a relatively or a very similar game style that we're trying to implement. So, yeah, it was a good test for our boys and the understanding about what they did and how they went about it, and more importantly, where we're at, but more importantly, where we want to be. So, look, we're a little way off that now. We understand that. We've got some work to do. Um, there'll be some things that we think can be relatively quickly fixed. You know, the long kicking is is important in our game, but we overdid it on the weekend. So, it'll be a, a tinkering and an adjustment this week. So, you left a legacy. 
Um, <laughs> Adam Kingsley's played like Richmond. I think Craig McRae left Collingwood and began <laughs> playing like Richmond, and now the Gold Coast Suns, you're wanting them to play like Richmond. Yeah, I know. There's nothing more flattening, though, when a, a side that is coached against you is beating you with your own system, which is a bit flattening, to be fair. But anyway, we, we get on with it and we, we look at it. Look, it's a system that we know and love, and I think it plays an exciting brand of footy. And like I said previously, it will take a little bit of time to implement and get it fully effective. But um, look, our boys have taken to it. They've got a reasonable understanding of it, but we'll grow throughout the year. It's a hand-picked match. The WWE would have done exactly this, Damien. How are you feeling about facing the old team first <laughs> up in a matter of days? Yeah, it's a funny one. I always think the round, look, it's round zero with this year, but the round zero games, you always feel a little bit of added, added pressure. I'm not sure why it is. It always seems like it's worth eight points, not four. You know, you certainly want to get off to a good start. And look, the fact that it is Richmond, look, at the moment I'm okay, but I suppose towards the... You know, as the game gets closer and I'll start to see some familiar faces on game day, it probably will be a little bit emotional as much as I'll try and keep that in check. You know, I've worked with that group of people for a long time and forged some really strong relationships and friendships with those guys. But, you know, I haven't lost to them in 15 years. I'm not planning on doing it now. So hopefully we can get over the line versus them this week. Will you get some gentle ribbing, do you think? Or is this the week where everyone knows to keep their distances regardless of personal relationships? <clears throat> Yeah, look, I think that we'll keep our distance this week and look, um, you know, generally the week after, regardless of win, lose or draw, we'll keep another week in, in lieu, but then we'll touch base throughout over the next couple of weeks after that. So, look, it'll be a challenge there. They're a side, you know, Ooze has got them playing some good footy as well and the way they go about it, very much a Melbourne flavour about how they're going about it. So, look, there'll be some challenges there for us, but it's a game we're really looking forward to, especially, you know, sold out crowd, which is enormous. And, you know, one thing I've learned up here is that, you know, half of Australia pop Australia's population is in the, the New South Wales and Queensland states. So for us to have the round zero is an incredible achievement for AFL footy and something I think should be uh, on the forefront of our, our seasons moving forward as well. I think it's logical to say, Vossi, that the expectation on Carlton will be far greater this year at this time than it was at the start of last year. Are, are you the kind of coach to, to, to instil great belief that don't avoid not talking about winning the premiership or are you a process coach and say no we'll just do this and we'll just we'll just worry about um, firstly about halfway through the year I didn't feel like the expectations were any different Robbo just uh, didn't just think so we're going to see you again um, so <laughs> I, I think the important thing is is that what we embrace is that we're we're a big football club and we've got a huge supporter base um, and so with that brings a lot of interest um, that brings interest within our supporter base and it brings interest in how we get talked about and you know Dim has coached the coach the Tigers so he fully understands the the enormity of having such a huge supporter base and such um, huge interest so I don't think that's something that you can ever step away from but I the think you've got to bring last it in. year Vossi that, 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 that's it's pretty sky high I mean people it's only people mm. are picking Carlton to win the premiership yeah, I, and I think what our challenge is within all that is just to keep it really real. Um, so I, I think that's where you talk about the outcome versus the process. Yep. And so we look at it, our information and we just say, what's really real? And what's real for us right now is that we're trying to establish real, some, some real consistency in the way that we want to play. Um, you know, we haven't nailed our home and away season and you can't do anything in this game. You've got to give yourself the best opportunity and you have to play consistent week after week. We haven't been able to do that. We didn't do that in my first year um, as coach and we sort of fell away towards the back end of the year. Um, you know, obviously we had that rough patch um, in the middle of last year. So, um, look, we're going after trying to be as consistent as we possibly can. And so how do you go um, about that? Sorry to cut you off, but how, uh, how well, do you, I think how... it's doubling down on some of the habits that you're trying to yeah. install in the group. Um, you know, it's similar dimmer. You're trying to find where your growth points are, and you know, try and encourage your players to stick to that. But if anything, it's uh, you know, playing finals footy it does give you an opportunity to be able to double down on some habits that you want to get after. And um, so we got that audit. We got that um, where we need to get better, and um, so we'll get after that. And I don't suppose that'll always work, um, but we have had another pre-season where we can go to work on it, and hopefully that obviously translates into into some more wins. So a couple of your individuals, Zach Williams, will he be there? Yeah, he'll be there, um, which is just a, a, a brilliant sure. story. Um, let him know yesterday in front of the team that he'd be playing, and you know, it was pretty emotional. Um, 
again, the Yali boys, I think the coach got a little emotional <laughs> as well. But, he, you know, he's had a lot of, um, you know, personal things going on in his life that uh, he's had to work through. And then on top of that, um, footy's been taken away from him over the last little while. So he's had some injury troubles. But despite all that, he's been able to sort of work his way through it. And um, he's got himself in some fantastic condition, probably the best of his career. And, you know, to give him the news, that's what you coach for to be able to sort of see someone who overcomes like that and is going to run out there he's got to get through training first of course um, but uh, yeah you'll be playing playing on the weekend what can he be for you Oh, he can give us a lot more drive um, out of our back half and um, you know we talk about little different things in your game and, and sometimes you try and improve your your system and sometimes some of the talent you have within the system improves your system and and he's certainly one of those guys um, he gives us a lot more bounce off half back and and he's really he, understated in his competitiveness, um, his ability to be able to win contests. So, um, no, he'll give us some terrific drive. I want to bring you back in, Dimmer, and I want you to, to, to join this too, Bossy. How much, Dimmer, do you think speed... Last year we had one of the great football seasons. It was bringing football. We had a great final series. How much do you think speed will pl- um, increase, if it, it can possibly increase, in footy, like Williams is going to a back flank, they've got Saad, they've got two streaming out. You, you're going to move Sexton to a, a back flank, at, allegedly. I mean, how much is speed going to play a role this year? <laughs> oh, I think it's really important. And you only got to look at, you know, the way, you know, Collingwood won the flag and, you know, the Norm Smith medalist in, in Bobby Hill is, is evidence of that. But even a guy like, you know, the value of a, a McCready type player, you know, that has got incredible aerobic capacity but he's the quickest player on their list um those sort of players are worth their weight in gold because they can cover ground they can get from contest to contest relatively quickly either exert pressure or win the ball themselves and i think every side craves it and every side's looking for it the reality is there's not a lot out there that plays a highly skilled afl game so trying to find those players is is really really challenging and you know vossi's bringing one back in you know, this week it's missed nearly two years of footy, but those sort of players are worth their weight in gold if they can get on the park and, and play, you know, exhilarating footy that moves the ball really, really quickly, either through ball use or, or breaking their lines through through speed. Michael? Yeah, it's definitely um, the opportunities. Defences now get organised so quickly that you have to maximise your opportunities. And you almost sort of, once you've lost that opportunity, you have to sort of almost give over to the fact that you've lost the opportunity and look for your next play. So... Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, no doubt um, in the first early rounds, you'll always see more speed on yep. the game. You'll see more fatigue because we're not quite all conditioned um, to the, I guess, the wear and tear of what a season will hold. But um, it, look, it promises to be some exciting football. And you know, you look at the two teams that played off in the grand final. They've been going at it for a little while. Um, they certainly brought that element to the game. So I'd be surprised if there's not some sort of trend towards that. And the other player I wanted to ask you about was Sam Walsh. What's the progress there or the lack of? Yeah, well, he's, um, I mean, it's sort of been spoken about after the intra club he pulled up um, fairly sore. Um, so we've, I guess, put some milestones in place. There's no timelines um, on what that actually looks like. Um, we're sort of guided by, I guess, every stage that he achieves. Um, if he gets there quickly, then we advance to the next stage. Um, if he doesn't get there quickly, then they we're obviously got to hang on a little while longer. So um, we'll probably have a, you know, hopefully a little bit more clearer idea on where he's at um, after round two. So that's our bias. So and probably somewhat after a round two. So that feels a little bit concerning. Is that the is that a fair reaction? To no, what he's, he's progressing as uh, as needed. Um, but uh, yeah, we'd just like to be going to you know clearly a little faster than what it actually is. So no, we're we're cautious because of um, the surgery he had what last year, um, and that he's had you know some soreness in that area previously. So we just need to be you know a little cautious um, that uh, when he shows signs like that, we certainly don't want to create that again. You conked out about round six and you got it back at about round 12. Then you surge and you conked out, conked out for the last three quarters of the, of the preliminary final. There was a great sense of pride of what you were able to achieve. But when you look back on, on, on footage of the night and the disappointment and the joy, how much, is, how much does this, for example, how much does this still live with you? Um, what happened at the end of last year? Now, I've spoken already a fair bit about this and there's probably two different things that sits for me is that the previous year was about the hurt and what we missed out on um, and this year has to be about the hunger. Um, the fact we were able to get a taste of that 
um, you know, hopefully drives the group to another level. And so as a coach, you're always on watch about where the group is. Are we a complacent group or are we a group that actually wants more? And um, what I've seen across the preseason is a really um, hungry group. Uh, I've seen individuals who have been able to step up their game and, you know, like everybody, we're just waiting in anticipation to be able to put that out there. Michael Voss and Damien Hardwick are our coaches as we head towards...